Welcome back to MedBoard Visuals, a primary care board review where you can relax and study for the boards at the same time. Now we are presently in the cardiology section, congestive heart failure. Subsection, congestive heart failure, part one. Heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. Okay, heart failure preserved ejection fraction equals diastolic dysfunction. So here we have a left ventricle, which is hypertrophied, and it's likely that this is due to hypertension, or that's a common cause of left ventricular hypertrophy. So why is LVH potentially problematic? It's a problem because the left ventricle is thick and stiff. Now when this happens, the LV is unable to relax and allow for proper filling during diastole. So if the heart can't relax properly, that's a problem. But let's first go over what normal is. So here we have a normal heart, and the dotted line on the outside represents normal relaxation. And the dotted line on the inside represents normal contraction. So here we have a heart that is thick and stiff. This is left ventricular hypertrophy. This heart has no problem contracting, so normal contraction. The problem is, because it is so stiff, it can't relax properly. So what do you think is going to happen if the heart is unable to relax properly? It can't fill properly. Remember, it's receiving blood from the left atrium. All right, so let's go over this. So if it's unable to relax properly, there's impaired left ventricular filling from the left atrium during diastole, because diastole is when the left ventricle is supposed to fill. So this arrow is blood coming from the left atrium. The left ventricle is supposed to be relaxing and accepting more blood, but it's not. The blood hits a stiff wall and accepts less blood. This is diastolic dysfunction, a filling problem. All right. If the left ventricle can't fill well, the blood will back up because it has no place else to go. So it backs up into the lungs due to high diastolic filling pressures, like this, resulting in pulmonary congestion, diastolic dysfunction causing congestive heart failure. Okay, so we have congestive heart failure due to diastolic dysfunction, but we know that the ejection fraction is normal. The fraction of blood ejected is usually normal because the filling of the left ventricle has started out limited. Let's take a closer look at this. All right, so we have a stiff left ventricle. Say, for instance, the left ventricle has 100 milliliters of blood, like this. Then ejects 55 milliliters of blood, like this. The ejection fraction is thus still normal at 55%, even in the setting of a stiff left ventricle. 55 divided by 100 equals 55%. But don't be fooled. This is, this is key. Don't be fooled. Even though the ejection fraction is normal, the left ventricle filling pressures are still high because the left ventricle does not relax properly. Okay, we're ejecting 55 milliliters from a smaller volume of blood. This is why the ejection fraction can be normal and the patient still has congestive heart failure. Let us say the left ventricle is compliant. All right, so here's our picture again. It's able to relax properly and is now able to fill up to 150 milliliters of blood. We're starting with a larger volume. Let's say the heart ejects the same 55 milliliters of blood, but this time having started out at 150 milliliters. All right, so 55 mLs has just been ejected. Okay, now the heart contracts, and let's say, for instance, it's not contracting properly, not able to fully contract, i.e., this is systolic heart failure. We're doing this for comparison. Now, the ejection fraction is reduced. 55 divided by 150 equals 37 percent even though 55 milliliters is still being ejected this is systolic heart failure as i mentioned so with both heart failure with preserved ejection fraction diastolic dysfunction 
and heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, systolic heart failure, pulmonary edema can result in both of them. Okay, so the next question is, why does diastolic heart failure occur in the first place? What are the causes? All right, so we have a patient here to help us, and he has a cigarette in his hand. How did I get diastolic congestive heart failure? Number one, coronary artery disease. Ischemia can cause stiffening of the heart. Perhaps this gentleman should stop smoking. Number two, uncontrolled hypertension can cause left ventricular hypertrophy. Darn, I have that too. Number three, diabetes can cause ventricular dysfunction independent of coronary artery disease or left ventricular hypertrophy. Wow, I'm three for three. Number four, obesity. Fat infiltration may interfere with heart structure. Oh my. Number five, renal dysfunction. It's thought that metabolic abnormalities leading to systemic inflammation and microvascular dysfunction. This may lead to fibrosis, myocyte stiffening, and hypertrophy. Yep, my diabetes caused that too. And we'll name three other causes, constrictive pericarditis, restrictive cardiomyopathy, and hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Finally, none of those. I guess I know now why I have diastolic congestive heart failure. So how do I treat it? Excellent question. We need to treat this gentleman. This is a common problem. All right, so treatment, heart failure preserved ejection fraction. And we have our good doctor to help us and our patient is back. I see you are no longer smoking. That's correct, doc, I'm done. That's the first step. Now we need to treat any other associated conditions. You mean my diabetes, hypertension, renal disease, coronary artery disease, and obesity? Correct. Diuretics will be used to control symptoms of volume overload. Note, ACE inhibitors, ARBs, beta blockers, cardiac resynchronization have no proven morbidity or mortality benefit with heart failure preserved ejection fraction. Other ineffective drugs include digoxin, except with AFib, organic nitrates, PDE5 inhibitors. So treatment summary for diastolic heart failure. Number one, treat any underlying conditions. And number two, diuretics. Now if we use diuretics, it's furosemide or spironolactone, watch the potassium with spironolactone and the renal function as well. So let's move on and summarize what we've learned up to this point for heart failure preserved ejection fraction. Number one, Diastolic dysfunction equals stiff ventricle. This can lead to high left ventricular filling pressures, and this can lead to congestive heart failure. Number two, causes, ischemia, uncontrolled hypertension, diabetes, obesity, renal disease, constrictive pericarditis, restrictive cardiomyopathy, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Number three, treatment. Treat associated conditions in number two above, and diuretics. Okay, on to our questions here. So question number one, a 62-year-old white male with a history of long-standing untreated hypertension presents with dyspnea and PND. His exam is notable for basilar lung crackles and a JVP of 15 centimeters. Chest x-ray shows evidence of pulmonary edema. Echocardiogram shows an ejection fraction of 55%. BNP is quite elevated at greater than 3,000. This patient likely has heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, pneumonia, pulmonary embolism, or heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, diastolic dysfunction. All right, answer here is number four, diastolic dysfunction. Question number two. CHF with preserved ejection fraction is usually treated with which of the below? A, beta blockers, ACE inhibitors, diuretics, B, diuretics and ACE inhibitors, C, diuretics and treat underlying cause. Okay, the answer here is C, diuretics and treat the underlying cause. 
All right, this now brings us to the end of this video, congestive heart failure part one, heart failure preserved ejection fraction. Join us now for the next video in the cardiology section, congestive heart failure part two, heart failure reduced ejection fraction. And as always, subscribe, press like, and ring the bell for notifications. Thank you from MedBoard Visuals.